Okay, so for this question then, we're asked to solve 2 cot squared 3 theta equals 7 cosec 3 theta minus 5. For theta, greater than or equal to 0 degrees, but less than or equal to 180 degrees. So, how do we go about solving something like this? Well, first of all, what I notice is that it's in the same angle, 3 theta, so that's good. I don't have to change anything there. But next, I notice that it's in different trigonometric functions. We've got cot and cosec. So I need to get them into the same trigonometric function. And to do that, I need to call upon an identity, an identity that you should be familiar with. And that identity is that 1 plus cot squared x is identical to cosec squared x. Okay. So we can make cot squared x the subject here and express it in terms of cosec squared x. So if we were to subtract 1 from both sides, you've got cot squared x then is identical to cosec squared x minus 1. So it's this identity then that we are going to use because we can change cot squared 3 theta, if we let x be the 3 theta, we can change it into cosec squared 3 theta minus 1. And that gives us an equation all in terms of the same trigonometric function, cosec. So let's do that substitution. So for this first term we've got 2 multiplied by cosec squared 3 theta minus 1. Okay. So cosec squared 3 theta minus 1. And that equals 7 cosec 3 theta minus 5. So just pop that in there. 7 cosec 3 theta minus 5. Next I'd want to expand this bracket. And if we do that we get 2 cosec squared 3 theta minus 2. And then I'm going to, well I won't do it now, I was going to say I'm going to bring all the terms to one side. We'll do that on this next line. Because I've got a quadratic equation in terms of cosec 3 theta here. So I need to make it equal to 0. So if we start off with 2 cosec squared 3 theta, then minus the 7 cosec 3 theta from both sides. And then if I add 5 to both sides, minus 2 plus 5 gives us plus 3, and that equals 0. So we have our quadratic equation then in cosec 3 theta set out in the right format. So we could either use the quadratic formula at this point. It would be cosec 3 theta equals the formula minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, where the a is 2, b is minus 7, and c is 3. But this one factorizes, so I'm going to factorize it. So we've got a couple of brackets here, equals 0, and we want a 2 cosec 3 theta at the front here, and a cosec 3 theta there. That will give us 2 cosec squared 3 theta. Two numbers that multiply together to give 3. That's going to be a minus 1 and a minus 3 because that will give us plus 3. But when we multiply it out, you can see we're going to get minus 6 cosec 3 theta minus another cosec 3 theta. So that's going to be minus 7 cosec 3 theta. So now we get to this stage, we can say that each of these two factors equals 0. So Therefore, we have 2 cosec 3 theta minus 1 equals 0, or the other factor, cosec 3 theta minus 3, that would equal 0. And if we were to rearrange this by adding 1 to both sides and dividing by 2, we'd therefore have cosec 3 theta equals a half, or in the case of this one, just add 3 to both sides, and you've got cosec 3 theta equals 3. Now, cosec is the same as 
1 over sine. So we have got therefore 1 over sine 3 theta must equal a half or in this case here we've got 1 over sine 3 theta must equal 3. And if we rearrange this for sine 3 theta in this one, just multiply both sides by 2 sine 3 theta, then you end up with sine 3 theta equals 2. And in this case, if you were to rearrange this, make sine 3 theta the subject, you'd find that you'd get 1 third. That's if you multiply both sides by sine of 3 theta and then divide by 3. Okay, now where do we go from here? Well, with sine 3 theta equals 2, we know that sine, the function, can only go between minus 1 and 1. So if you were to do the inverse sine of 2, you'd get an error on your calculator. So basically for this one, we have got no solution. Okay, so it's this one that we need to concentrate on. So let's just come down here and we'll see how we can do this. And we'll border this off, okay? So we've got, therefore, if sine 3 theta equals a third, then 3 theta must be equal to the inverse sine of 1 third. Okay, so we take the inverse sine of both sides. Now at this stage, I would generally suggest using a quadrant diagram. Some of you might prefer to use a graphical method, but quadrant diagrams are a lot quicker, I feel. Um, so if we're using the quadrant diagram for something like this, I'd want to squeeze it in here. It's got to be small if I'm to keep this on the same video. Okay, so I hope you understand that. But uh, we've got naught degrees here we've got the sine of a positive, or sine, sine of an angle gives a positive value. And sine is positive in the first quadrant, this one, and the second quadrant. If you're unfamiliar with the quadrant rule and want to revise it, I've always got tutorials on this. So sine is positive in this quadrant, so you draw a line there, and you draw a line equally inclined to this horizontal line, okay? so. We want angles, our solutions, to be between 0 and 180. So the first angle that's going to be a solution is this one in here. This is a possible 3 theta. We go from the starting line here, turn in an anti-clockwise sense to this first line. Another angle that's a solution is this one, starting from here again, going all the way around to this line here. This too is a possible 3 theta. Don't make the mistake of just working out what this is, dividing by three, and then doing your quadrant diagram. Always do your quadrant diagram from this point, okay? Where you do your first inverse trig function. Okay, so there's two values for three theta. Let's just work those out, first of all. What do they come out at? Well, if you use your calculator, you find that the inverse sine of a third turns out to be 19.471 degrees, 19.471 and so on degrees. Okay, make sure your calculator is in degrees mode just in case you were doing calculations earlier in radians, okay? An easy mistake to make. And uh, what else can you get? Well, that's this one for 3 theta. It's telling us that this angle in here, this little blue part here is 19.471. So that's going to be the same as that bit there. So to get the green 3 theta, we need to do 180 degrees minus the 19.471. Do that and you get 160.528 and so on degrees. Now, you've got to be very careful here because we want theta to be between 0 and 180 degrees. So that means that we need to go outside this range if we've got 3 theta. Because we'll be dividing back by 3, so that will pull it back in the range. So if we're to multiply through by 3, theta's got to be between 0 degrees, 
then we'd have 3 theta and 3 lots of 180. Well, that is 540 degrees. So we're still in range. So the next solution is to go round from this 3 theta, this red one, to go round again another 360 degrees. So if I add 360 degrees to this angle here, 19.471, we get 379, I'll put it down here, 379.471 odd degrees. Now we can also add 360 degrees to this green angle here because the green angle is 160.528 and if we add 360 to that we get 520.528 so that's still in range let's just put that one in 520.528 and so on degrees so that when I now divide each one of these by three we find that we get angles within the range 0 to 180 degrees. If I divide each of these then by 3, what I get then is 6.490 and so on degrees for the first one. The next one I get 53.509 and so on degrees and then for this one I get 126.490 and so on degrees and finally for this last one I get 173.509 and so on. So when we round these up to say one decimal place theta equals 6.5 degrees, 53.5 degrees 126.5 degrees and finally 173.5 degrees and all of these are given to one decimal place all to one dp then okay so that's given you some idea then how we can go about this particular question